Protecting the sea from radiation is one of the highest priorities in the management of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station. This video focuses on one of several methods being employed by TEPCO and our partners to prevent contaminated water from reaching the sea, groundwater bypass. Simply put, groundwater bypass is a strategy to intercept groundwater before it can come into contact with radioactivity inside the Fukushima Daiichi facility. Water that is successfully intercepted and remains uncontaminated can be safely sent back on its way to the sea, protected from contact with any contamination. Intercepting and rerouting uncontaminated groundwater is important for two reasons. One, it prevents that water from being contaminated with radiation. And two, it reduces the burden on the Fukushima Daiichi facility to treat and store contaminated water. Storage takes up increasing amounts of space and can be vulnerable to leaks. Groundwater poses a challenge at Fukushima Daiichi for several reasons. First, as you can see in this photograph, the Fukushima Daiichi facility is located at the base of a hillside next to the ocean. Groundwater, like all water, runs downhill. As a result, rain that falls both outside the facility and inside the facility seeps into the ground and then runs downhill toward the sea. Ordinarily, this would pose no problem. But since the accident at Fukushima Daiichi after the March 2011 tsunami, groundwater that enters the facility may become contaminated either by coming into direct contact with the damaged nuclear fuel or by coming into contact with other contamination on the site. Today, some 400 tonnes of groundwater flows into the site buildings every day and becomes contaminated. As this contaminated water accumulates and must be stored on the site, the challenge of cleaning and managing the water grows significantly. Obviously then, preventing at least some of that water from entering the site is important to reduce the contaminated water. This is the goal of groundwater bypass. Following consultation with the government, several measures against contaminated water are applied or prepared. We are building an impervious wall on the sea side of the buildings to suppress the groundwater outflow to the sea. And we will make a wall of the frozen soil around a building to prevent the groundwater inflow to the buildings. Groundwater bypass is one of the countermeasures to keep water away from the sources of contamination. How does groundwater bypass work? As you see in this animation, we will pump up the groundwater on the uphill side of the facility but we will not divert the water directly to the sea. Instead, to ensure that the water is uncontaminated, we will temporarily store and test it. We will store the water in tanks separate from the ones being used to hold contaminated water. Why might this water be contaminated at all? Rainwater that seeps into the ground may carry some surface radiation with it. In most instances, this is quite low but TEPCO is committed to ensuring that this bypass water is discharged only when it is clean enough to return to the sea. Its standards are stricter than WHO guidelines on the drinking water. The results of those tests will be promptly posted on the TEPCO website. For more information on our water management plans, as well as additional information on progress at Fukushima Daiichi and our overall nuclear reform plans, go to www.tepco.co.jp forward slash en forward slash index hyphen e dot html TEPCO had been installing conventional on-site welded tanks. However, handling the increase of the amount of contaminated water is essential. And one of the most important tasks is that TEPCO has to increase the number of the tanks. Therefore, this project is to install factory-made tanks transported by sea to add to the conventional on-site welded tanks. As of April 17, 2014, this is the very first set of factory-made contaminated water storage tanks on the premises of Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station.
Supporting this factory-made tank installation project, there was another major project to establish a transportation corridor which had to be done within a very short period of time, about three months. This other project aimed at transportation of large tanks, preventing contact with any object along the way. It included various work, ranging from road expansion and paving work, removal or relocation of power lines and distribution lines, felling of roadside trees, relocation of floodlights and traffic lights, to advanced vehicle travel testing. 福島第一の現在の状況また作業環境等々を踏まえまして非常にあの困難なプロジェクトだなというところが、えー、最初の印象です今回のプロジェクトを成功させないと福島第一の安定化にまた廃炉の対策にも進めないということで絶対にやらなくちゃいけないという強い使命感を持って今回のプロジェクトに挑みましたまずは現場の状況の把握というところを一番急ぎました洗い出したらですね100以上の干渉する設備干渉箇所が中止されました強愛な箇所での道路の拡幅工事が非常に困難でした、えー、道路の拡幅をする際にですね脇には水位バイパスの配管が通っておってですねそこは夜間工事で、えー、全て対応したんですが当初想定していた工程よりも遅れていってですねそこの工程をつかむことが非常に困難でありました昼間の作業につきましては朝の7時から夕方の3時まで,で夜間につきましては夜の7時から翌朝の3時4時までの2個体制で This project required the collective efforts of TEPCO and tank manufacturers and the comprehensive employment of their technologies. The tanks transported and installed this time were six 700 ton type tanks. Now, the Futami and Kobe Hon are the same as the Kobe Hon. The Kobe Hon is the same as the Kobe Hon. 人員を投入してですねタンクの製造に取り掛かっております制作しながら走りしながらですね検査のご要求にも一応対応するというところがですね今までにないやり方ということです Completed tanks are being transported by sea to the shallow draft key at the harbor of Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station These tanks are very large with a height of 15.6 meters a diameter of 8.1 meters and a weight of 75 tons The tanks are slowly and carefully unloaded using a 750-ton crawler crane, ensuring the safety of the surrounding environment without stress on the tanks. Tanks are then loaded onto special carriers called super carriers one at a time. Tanks are being transported to the installation site at night so as not to interfere with the decommissioning work at a driving speed as slow as a person walking And installed. 私的にはちょっとハラハラしながら見てた部分はあったんですが、えー、どこも干渉することなく無事に G7 エリアまでスーパーキャリアで輸送できたということが確認できて非常にこのプロジェクトをやってよかったなという思いがあります。Thank you for watching this video. I'm Masayuki Ono of the Tokyo Electric Power Company. I deeply apologize to the people in the areas surrounding the Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station and to the broader society for the tremendous inconvenience and anxiety caused by the accident at the power station. I would like to detail progress in the removal of highly radioactive contaminated trench water, an important step being implemented with urgency as one measure in the removal of contaminated water. I hope this video will help you understand this measure. This is a photo of units 1 to 4 taken from the air. As explained in the previous series, groundwater near the protective bank east of the turbine buildings was found contaminated with radioactive material. Therefore, 
we are currently implementing a measure that will prevent groundwater leakage into the port. This measure is to seal the soil near the protective bank by injecting liquid glass, which makes soil solid and impermeable. This is a map of the underground tunnels called trenches on the seaside of the turbine buildings. The trenches extend from the turbine buildings to locations near the protective banks. Highly radioactive contaminated water that had accumulated in the basements of the turbine buildings following the accident has also accumulated in these trenches. Leakage of highly radioactive contaminated water from inside these trenches is considered the cause of the contamination of groundwater near the protective bank. Immediately after the accident, there was an incident where contaminated water that leaked from the trenches of Units 2 and 3 leaked into the port. We then stopped the leakage by blocking the parts of the trenches near the leakage spots, filling the areas with concrete. However, highly radioactive water that had previously leaked into the ground may still be causing contamination. Further, since there has been extremely contaminated water accumulating in the trenches of Units 2 and 3, even leakage of a slight amount of this water into the port would increase radioactive material densities in seawater near the protective bank. This is a three-dimensional illustration of the trenches of Unit 2 from the sea. Between the turbine building and the protective bank, we have an underground structure as shown here. Large amounts of highly radioactive contaminated water have accumulated inside the trench's main bodies. For example, approximately 5,000 tons in Unit 2 and approximately 6,000 tons in Unit 3. Since the accident, we have taken measures to prevent this contaminated water from leaking into the ocean. Further, we recognize that removing the contaminated water is an urgent, key task. However, construction work to remove contaminated water from inside the trench's main bodies is difficult because the radioactivity around them is high. For this reason, the construction method was carefully considered. I will explain a measure we took at the first stage. This is a schematic side view of the trench where highly radioactive contaminated water has accumulated. The orange area shows where it has accumulated. First, we installed a mobile contaminated water purification system. Highly radioactive contaminated water is sucked up from the seaside part of the trench, purified, and returned to the trench near the turbine building. The contaminated water is purified while being circulated through the inside of the trench in this manner. Why is the water, sucked up from the trench and purified, returned and circulated through the trench? The reason is that, since the trench is connected to the turbine building, newly contaminated water will flow into the trench from the turbine building unless the purified water is returned to the trench. It's clear that stopping water between the turbine building and the trench is an absolute requirement for finally removing contaminated water from the trench. Practically speaking, however, this is very difficult. I will explain more about this difficulty later. This mobile contaminated water purification system mainly removes cesium. Removal of cesium, which accounts for approximately half of the contaminating material and which emits strong gamma radiation, can reduce risks such as the risk of radiation exposure from the accumulated water during the work. The treatment capability of the system is 500 tons a day. The purification treatment operation was started on November 14, 2013 for Unit 2 and on November 15 for Unit 3. As a result, the cesium-137 density near Unit 2, for example, previously at levels as high as 170 million becquerels per liter, was reduced to approximately one-third of that level after purification operations of about a week, and the purification operations are ongoing. Next, I will explain the second measure in detail. This step is an absolute requirement for final removal of contaminated water from the trench, namely, stopping water between the turbine building and the trench. 
The trenches of Unit 2 and 3 are connected to the turbine buildings underground. For this reason, newly contaminated water flows into the trenches no matter how much contaminated water is removed from these trenches. Stopping water between the turbine building and the trench is absolutely necessary for removing contaminated water from the trenches and stopping up the trenches with filler. However, as the trenches are filled with highly radioactive water, working there is dangerous. As such, development of a water stoppage method has been a substantial technical challenge. In response to this challenge, we have developed a water stoppage method in which the contaminated water inside the trenches is frozen. Since this is an application of new technology, a mock-up test was conducted to examine whether the water can actually be stopped. Now let me explain about the frozen water stoppage method. First, a hole is bored in the upper side of a trench with a drill, and a freezer pipe is inserted into the trench. Next, a fabric bag called a packer is inserted so that it can surround the freezer pipe. Then, this packer is expanded by being filled with cement and a material called bentonite, thereby blocking up the trench. This facilitates generation of an ice wall. By being refrigerated in this state, the water inside the trench is frozen together with the packer, so that a strong ice wall is generated for completely stopping water. Finally, the accumulated water in the trench is removed. Again, this is a new method created in response to this challenge. The frozen water stoppage method was originally intended to generate frozen soil by inserting a freezer pipe into the ground and freezing the water contained in the soil, a proven technology for this purpose. However, freezing accumulated water itself to form an ice wall in a desired location is being tried this time. In practice, it is very difficult and has never been tried before. Now let me explain about the results of the mock-up tests. This is a mock-up unit. This is a large-scale unit, fully half the size of the actual one. This is a mock trench measuring 2 meters in width and 2 meters in depth. A freezer pipe is installed separating the front and back sides of the trench. This is one of the test results, and you can see an ice wall already formed. Water accumulated in the front side has been removed. The part behind the ice wall has water two meters deep. Water inside the trench has been completely stopped by the ice wall. This is another test result obtained in a test case simulating a case where obstacles, such as piping and cable trays, prohibit full insertion of the packer. In this case also, an ice wall was successfully formed with an increased number of freezer pipes. As in the above case, the part behind the ice wall has water two meters deep. For example, as you can see, the piping has been blocked with the water inside it frozen. Based on these tests using our large-scale mock-up unit, we can now clearly see that we will be able to solve the difficult problem of stopping the highly radioactive contaminated water accumulated inside the underground trenches. Please note that the ice wall will not leak water because it is capable of repairing itself. Even if it develops cracks, water penetrating into the cracks will be frozen. Additionally, the ice, formed in a frozen wall over a long time, is not easy to melt. We will start with the freezing of the Unit 2 trenches beginning around March 2014. Complete formation of an ice wall will take a long time. However, we are planning to form a strong ice wall and then start removing water from the trenches in May 2014. After the water removal, the trenches will be blocked with filler. We will proceed with implementation for Unit 3 following the results of implementation for Unit 2. We are determined to steadily solve on-site problems using this technology. Thank you for watching this video.